All right, let's get real for a second. If overthinking was an Olympic sport, most of us would be wearing gold medals right now. You ever find yourself lying awake at 2 a.m., replaying something embarrassing you said in 2015? Yeah, same here. But what if I told you? Overthinking is actually a bad habit, and we're about to break it. Today, I'm hitting you with honest, controversial, and downright fun ways to stop that mental spiral for good. Spoiler alert. It's not about yoga, self-help books, or positive affirmations. Nope, we're diving deeper than that. Ready? Let's do this. 1. Overthinking kills creativity. Okay, here's something that might sting a little. Overthinking. It's the creativity killer. Like, dead in the water. And I know some people are going to hate this take because we've all convinced ourselves that thinking deeply means we're somehow more insightful, more prepared. Spoiler alert, it doesn't. In fact, overthinking is like mental quicksand. The more you think, the deeper you sink. And guess what? It's all in your head. You ever sat down to work on a project and spent hours over analyzing every detail, so much so that you never actually start? Yeah, that used to be me. I had this brilliant idea for a video. Seriously, it was going to be groundbreaking. But instead of just hitting record, I sat there for days worrying about lighting, angles, scripts, and, get this, whether people would even like it. So, what happened? I overthought myself out of making the video entirely. Creative paralysis. Let me tell you something, overthinkers. Creativity isn't about being perfect or getting everything just right. It's about doing. It's about putting yourself out there, taking risks, and embracing the messy, awkward, sometimes cringy parts of creation. I'll be real with you. Some of the best videos I've made were the ones I didn't even think about too much. I just hit record, went for it, and let it flow. Sure, some of them were a little rough, but people loved the authenticity. They weren't sitting there like, ooh, why didn't they use a four-point lighting system? No, they were vibing with the message. Look, I'm not saying to abandon all planning or thought. I mean, obviously, don't go full chaos mode, unless that's your thing. But here's the truth. Overthinking kills your vibe. You start out with this exciting idea, full of energy, and by the time you've overthought it to death, you've squeezed all the joy out of it. Overthinking is really just fear in disguise. It's the fear of being judged, fear of failure, fear that what you're creating won't be good enough. But let me drop this on you. Creativity isn't supposed to be perfect. It's supposed to be expressive. It's about connection, not perfection. If I had let overthinking control my creativity, this channel wouldn't even exist. So here's my challenge to you. Next time you have a creative spark, act on it. Don't give yourself time to overthink. Write that song, paint that picture, record that podcast, whatever it is, just do it. Don't wait for everything to be perfect, because it never will be. And even if it's not your best work, it's still a step forward. Because here's the deep truth. Creativity thrives in action, not in your head. It's the doing that matters. So get out of your own way. Stop overanalyzing every detail and let your creativity breathe. 2. Stop trying to be perfect, because you're not. All right, let's cut straight to the chase. Perfection is a total scam. Yeah, I said it, this whole obsession with being perfect is not only exhausting, but completely unattainable. And yet, we're all out here acting like we've got to be flawless, like if one thing goes wrong, the universe is going to implode. Spoiler, it won't. And let me be real with you, it's time to stop trying to be perfect, because guess what? You're not, and neither am I. Nobody is. Let me tell you a story. A few years ago, I was asked to give this big talk in front of hundreds of people. I spent weeks preparing, obsessing over every word, every slide, the perfect outfit, down to the shoelaces. 
I had this whole, I'm going to absolutely nail this vibe going on. So the day comes, and as I'm walking up to the stage, I trip, like full on stumble, nearly face planting in front of the entire room. In that moment, all I could think was, Welp, so much for perfect, but you know what happened next? Everyone laughed, not at me, with me, I laughed too. And after that, the talk went great. It was one of my best, and people still come up to me and say how relatable that moment was. It made me human. So, there it is. Perfection shattered in the first two minutes, and I've never been more connected with an audience. Here's the controversial part. Perfection is overrated, and honestly, it's boring. Think about it. When was the last time you felt truly inspired by someone who seemed flawless? You probably didn't, right? It's our flaws and our realness that make us relatable, that connect us to others. People don't want to see perfection, they want to see authenticity. I mean, would you rather watch someone who's perfectly polished but robotic, or someone who's a little messy, makes mistakes, but is genuine? I'm betting on the latter. And let's not forget, perfectionism isn't just about how you look or how you perform, it's about control. We think if we can make everything perfect, we'll somehow avoid judgment or failure. But here's the honest truth. Perfectionism is just a fancy way of saying I'm scared. Scared of being judged, scared of failing, scared of not being enough. And that fear is what's actually holding us back, not the fact that we aren't perfect. I've had videos where I agonized over every single frame, trying to make everything just right. Do you know what happened? Those were the videos that flopped, and the ones where I said, screw it, let's just roll with it. Those are the ones that took off. There's something about letting go of that need for perfection that makes the creative process flow, that makes you more you. Plus, nobody even notices the tiny things we stress over, half the time, we're the only ones who care. Here's the real deep message. Trying to be perfect keeps us from actually living. We waste so much time obsessing over every little detail, every possible outcome, that we forget to actually do things, to take risks, to put ourselves out there. Perfectionism makes you cautious when what you really need is to be bold. It keeps you stuck in your head instead of moving forward. Look. Life is messy. It's full of mistakes, awkward moments, and unexpected surprises. And that's what makes it beautiful. The people who are truly successful, who live fulfilling lives, aren't the ones who get it all right. They're the ones who embrace the chaos, the imperfections, and still keep going. They've learned that perfection isn't the goal. Progress is. And if you're waiting to be perfect before you do something, you're never going to start. Trust me, I've been there. So here's your permission slip. Stop trying to be perfect. Stop overthinking every detail. Stop worrying about what people will think and stop holding yourself to an impossible standard. You're not perfect and you don't need to be. You just need to show up, be real and take action. The world doesn't need your perfection. It needs you, the real you flaws, mistakes, quirks, and all. So, the next time you feel yourself slipping into that perfectionist spiral, remember this. Done is better than perfect. Messy is better than not doing it at all. And real is always better than polished. Let go of perfection. It's overrated. 3. You'll never know what people are thinking, so stop trying. All right. Time for a brutal truth bomb. You will never know what people are thinking about you. And I get it. There's that little voice in the back of your mind that's like, but what if they secretly think I'm weird? What if I embarrassed myself at the party last night? Do they hate me now? Spoiler alert. You will never know. So stop wasting your mental energy trying to figure it out. I mean, Unless you've somehow unlocked mind-reading powers, which, if you have, let's talk after this. But seriously, this endless mental game of, 
what do they think about me, is exhausting, pointless, and honestly, a little bit self-absorbed. Yup, I said it. Controversial take incoming, overthinking what people are thinking about you is more about you than it is about them. You think everyone's got a magnifying glass on you, but they don't. Newsflash, people are too busy worrying about themselves to constantly analyze you. Let me hit you with some real talk from my own life. I used to walk away from social situations replaying everything I said like I was reviewing game footage. Why did I make that joke? Did they think I was being rude? Why did I talk so much about my dog? The funny thing is, half the time, those people don't even remember the conversation. I was spending hours agonizing over what I said while they'd already moved on with their day. There was this one time I was convinced a friend was mad at me because I made some sarcastic comment. I spent days stressing, overanalyzing texts and almost avoided them because I was so anxious about what they might think. Then, when I finally brought it up, they were like, Huh? What are you even talking about? Mind blown. They didn't care at all. Here's the kicker. Overthinking what other people think of you doesn't change a thing. You can spend all day analyzing, stressing and obsessing, but at the end of the day, you still don't know what's in their head. And honestly, you're probably wrong. We overthink ourselves into a corner, imagining the worst case scenario, but the reality is usually way less dramatic. People aren't dissecting every word you say or move you make. They've got their own lives, worries and insecurities to deal with. Let me make this more controversial for you. If you're spending all your time wondering what other people think, you're not actually being present with them. You're too busy living in your own head. You miss out on real connections because you're too focused on managing how others perceive you. The truth is, you'll never know what someone else thinks. You can't control it and you shouldn't try. It's a waste of energy. I know, big shocker, right? But here's where it gets deep. When we spend all this time trying to guess or control what others think, it's really about our fear of not being accepted. We want so badly to be liked, to be understood, that we start to contort ourselves into someone we're not just to fit in. But here's the thing. I've learned the hard way that when you focus on being authentic, on being you without worrying what others are thinking, you actually attract the right people, the ones who get you. The ones who don't care if you made a dumb joke or said something awkward because they're more interested in you than in your slip-ups. Let me share a personal breakthrough with you. There was a time in my life when I constantly adjusted my behavior to match what I thought other people expected. I tried to be everything for everyone, to always be on, and it was exhausting. I'd leave social events feeling drained, over-analyzing every conversation, and still not knowing if I'd made the right impression. Then one day, I hit this wall. I realized that no matter how much I tried to mold myself into someone else's idea of perfect, I would never really know what they thought. And that's when I let it go. I stopped caring so much, and I started just being me. And you know what? The more I did that, the better my relationships became. The people who stuck around were the ones who appreciated the real, unpolished version of me. So. Here's the real deal. Stop overthinking what people are thinking about you because you're never going to know. And even if you did, it doesn't change who you are. Trying to control their thoughts is like trying to control the weather, futile, exhausting, and kind of pointless. Instead of living in your head, live in the moment. Show up as your true self and let the chips fall where they may. You'll be happier, lighter, and guess what? you'll end up attracting people who love you for you. And remember this, people's thoughts about you are none of your business. They're not. Their thoughts are their own, and they have no bearing on your worth or how you should live your life. You can't change their minds, so why bother? Focus on being authentic, focus on being present, and stop trying to play mental detective. 
You'll feel so much better when you let go of the need to control how others see you. So next time you catch yourself spiraling, wondering what someone might be thinking, just laugh it off and remind yourself, I'll never know and I don't need to. 4. Overthinking is procrastination in disguise. All right, buckle up because this one's going to sting a little. Overthinking? Yeah, it's just procrastination wearing a clever disguise. I know, I know. Controversial take, right? We've all been there telling ourselves, I'm just being thorough, or I need to think this through from every angle. Nah, fam. What you're really doing is avoiding action. You're putting off doing the thing you know you need to do, and overthinking is the perfect excuse. You get to feel productive without actually being productive. I said what I said. Look, I'm not calling anyone out, except I totally am, because I've been the king of this. I used to think my overthinking was just me being careful, making sure every detail was perfect, but here's the truth. I wasn't being careful. I was scared, scared of making the wrong move, scared of failing, scared of looking stupid. So, instead of acting, I sat there in analysis paralysis, convincing myself that thinking things through was progress. Spoiler, it wasn't. I was just wasting time. Let me tell you about the time I wanted to start this YouTube channel. I had so many ideas. I spent months researching, watching tutorials, drafting scripts, obsessing over every little thing, lighting, editing, the perfect opening line. I'd sit there, reworking ideas, tweaking things that didn't even matter. All the while, I wasn't actually doing anything. You know why? Because I was terrified of putting myself out there. Overthinking became my safety blanket. I could tell myself, oh, I'm not procrastinating, I'm just being thorough. But the reality was, I was scared to take the plunge. So, I just stayed stuck in planning mode, pretending like I was preparing, when really, I was just stalling. And that's the truth for a lot of us. We use overthinking as a way to procrastinate without feeling guilty about it. I'll do it when I've thought it all through. But guess what? You never think it all through. There's always one more detail to obsess over, one more scenario to analyze. So you sit there spinning your wheels and the task never gets done. And here's the kicker. By overthinking, you're actually avoiding the one thing that leads to progress, action. Here's where it gets deep. Overthinking isn't just a waste of time. It's a fear response. We're so afraid of making mistakes that we think we can think our way out of failure. But here's the thing, no matter how much you overthink, you will make mistakes. It's part of the process. And the more you try to avoid failure by overanalyzing everything, the longer you delay your growth. You know what actually builds confidence? Doing, taking risks, making mistakes, learning from them. Action leads to progress not sitting in your head, overthinking every step. You want to hear something wild? One day, I just got fed up with my own procrastination and thought, screw it, I'm going to film this video even if it's a disaster. And you know what? It wasn't perfect. The lighting was a little off. I stumbled over my words and my editing was clunky. But guess what? I actually did it and it felt amazing. That video, it got more views than anything I'd ever imagined. Why? Because I stopped overthinking and just took action. And that's when I realized overthinking had been holding me back from starting, from creating, from growing. Let me throw a little more controversy your way. Overthinking is actually laziness in disguise too. Yeah, I said it. We hide behind our mental gymnastics because it feels easier than facing the discomfort of action. When you're sitting there, debating every little detail, it feels like you're working hard, but you're not. You're just delaying the inevitable. Taking action is scary because it's where the real work begins. That's when you're vulnerable, when you could fail, when you have to actually show up. But here's the deep truth. 
Life is about doing, not thinking. If you sit on the sidelines, overthinking every move, you're going to watch life pass you by. You'll never feel ready. You'll never have all the answers. And that's okay. You don't need to have it all figured out to take the first step. The people who succeed in life aren't the ones who spent years thinking things through. They're the ones who jumped in and figured it out as they went along. They made mistakes, they learned, they adjusted, and they kept moving forward. So here's my challenge to you. The next time you catch yourself overthinking, ask yourself, am I really planning or am I procrastinating? Because let's be real, 99% of the time, it's the latter. Instead of wasting more time in your head, take action, make the call, send the email, hit record on that video, whatever it is, just do it. You'll be amazed at how much progress you make when you stop overthinking and start doing. And remember this, perfection isn't the goal, progress is. You don't have to know everything to get started and you don't need to be perfect to succeed. Overthinking won't get you where you want to go. Action will. So, next time you're spiraling, thinking, but what if, cut yourself off and just take the leap. You've got this. And hey, if you mess up, welcome to the club. We're all just winging it anyway. 5. Make peace with making mistakes. All right, here comes the uncomfortable truth. You're going to make mistakes, lots of them. And if you think you can go through life without screwing up, I've got news for you. You're in for a rude awakening. The key to surviving this thing we call life is simple. You've got to make peace with making mistakes. Stop fighting it. Stop running from it. Embrace it. Mistakes aren't the enemy. They're the best teachers you'll ever have. Now, I know someone out there is already clutching their pearls thinking, but I don't like messing up. It makes me feel terrible. Well, guess what? That's the point. It's supposed to sting a little. That's how you learn. That discomfort is the birthplace of growth. And let me tell you something controversial. If you're not making mistakes, you're probably not taking enough risks. Yeah, I said it, playing it safe all the time. That's the real mistake. You're stifling your potential because you're too scared of failure. Let me hit you with a personal example. When I first started this channel, I was terrified of looking stupid. I'd spend hours editing videos, re-recording lines, tweaking everything until it was perfect because I thought I had to avoid mistakes at all costs. But then it happened, the mistake. I uploaded a video with a major editing error. I'm talking about random cuts, awkward pauses, and a moment where I accidentally left in me mumbling, wait, what was I saying again? It was a mess. I was mortified. I thought, that's it. People are going to think I'm an amateur and my channel is done for. But you know what? It turned out to be one of my most popular videos. Why? Because it was real. It was raw. People actually liked seeing the imperfections, the human side. I got comments like, this is hilarious, I love how genuine you are, and thanks for keeping it real. That's when I realized, people don't need you to be perfect. They need you to be authentic. And mistakes? They're part of that authenticity. Here's the deep part. We've been conditioned to believe that mistakes are something to be ashamed of, something that tarnishes our worth. But that's a lie. Mistakes are not a reflection of your value. They're a reflection of your effort. When you make a mistake, it means you're trying. It means you're stepping outside your comfort zone and challenging yourself. And that's where growth happens. The people who are truly successful aren't the ones who never mess up. They're the ones who mess up a lot and keep going anyway. They learn from every mistake, they adapt, and they get better. And let's get controversial again. If you're obsessed with never making mistakes, you're probably more worried about what people think than about actually learning and growing. That's the real issue, isn't it? We don't want to look stupid. We don't want to be judged. So we play it safe. 
We aim for perfection because we think that'll protect us from criticism. Newsflash. It won't. People are going to judge you no matter what you do, so why not make some mistakes along the way? At least you'll be doing something instead of standing still. There was this one time I launched a project, and I mean, I put my heart and soul into it. I thought it was going to be a massive success. But it flopped. Hard. Like barely anyone cared. I felt like such a failure. But here's the thing. After the dust settled, I realized that the project taught me so much. I learned what didn't work, what to avoid next time, and where my real strengths were. If I hadn't made those mistakes, I wouldn't have figured out how to improve. Looking back, that so-called failure was one of the best things that ever happened to me. Here's the truth. Mistakes are inevitable. They're part of the process, part of life. If you spend all your time trying to avoid them, you're not really living. You're not growing. You're not learning. In fact, trying to be perfect all the time actually holds you back. It keeps you in a box, afraid to take risks. But when you accept that mistakes are part of the journey, you free yourself. You can finally move forward without the fear of failure paralyzing you. And here's the real deep message. Making mistakes doesn't make you a failure. It makes you human. Every single person you admire, every successful person out there, they've all made tons of mistakes. The difference is, they didn't let those mistakes define them. They learned from them and kept going. That's the secret. So the next time you mess up, instead of beating yourself up, try this. Laugh. Seriously, just laugh it off. Acknowledge that you're human, you're learning, and this is part of the process. Then ask yourself, what can I learn from this? I promise you, once you stop seeing mistakes as disasters and start seeing them as stepping stones, life gets a whole lot lighter. So here's my challenge for you. Go out and make some mistakes. Yup, I said it. Put yourself in situations where you might mess up. Try something new. Take that risk. Because if you're not making mistakes, you're not pushing yourself hard enough. The goal isn't to be perfect. The goal is to be better. And every mistake you make is a step toward that. And remember, done is better than perfect. And real is better than flawless. So stop beating yourself up over every little mistake and start celebrating the fact that you're out there doing the thing. That's what matters. Make peace with your mistakes, learn from them, and keep moving forward. Life's a lot more fun when you stop trying to get it all right and start embracing the beautiful, messy chaos that comes with being human. All right, folks, that's it for today. We've covered a lot. Overthinking, procrastination, perfectionism, and most importantly, making peace with mistakes. Remember, life is way too short to spend it trapped in your own head, worrying about what could go wrong. You're gonna mess up, you're gonna fail, and you're going to feel awkward sometimes. And guess what? That's perfectly fine. It's part of the ride. So next time your brain starts spiraling, just pause, laugh and say, I'm human. I'm allowed to screw up. Then go out there and do the thing you've been overthinking for way too long. Life's waiting for you on the other side of your fear. Don't let overthinking hold you back any longer. If you enjoyed today's video, hit that like button and share your biggest takeaway in the comments. And hey, if you're feeling brave, drop a story about a time you made a mistake and what you learned from it. I love hearing those. Don't forget to subscribe for more Real Talk. And as always, hit that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. Remember, progress, not perfection. You're doing better than you think. Keep going, keep learning, and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, stay bold, stay messy, and stay you. Peace.